وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My beloved brothers and sisters we were speaking about in our previous uh, lesson on practical steps of how to attain knowledge we spoke about the uh, importance uh, of understanding knowledge and having a correct perception of it we also spoke about what it means what does it actually mean to have fahmul lidinillahi understanding of the religion of allah and a correct perception and tasawwur which is sahih we spoke about that inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into wasail al mu'ina means that will help you means that will aid you to have the ability to understand knowledge as it should be understood to be a person whose perception of knowledge is accurate a person who is precise in the religion a person who is precise in knowledge that's what we're going to be idhnillah al kareem speak about it the way that we're going to break it down inshallah ta'ala is ila qismayn into two types we're going to break it into what into two types the first inshallah ta'ala is what we're going to speak about today and tomorrow idhnillah al kareem tomorrow we're going to speak about the last the last points inshallah ta'ala the first one is sifatun yanbaghi characteristics that are required characteristics that are required and yatahalla biha talibul ilm characteristics that are required from a student of knowledge to adorn himself with if he wants to attain if he wants to attain correct understanding of knowledge if you want to understand if you have if you want to have the understanding that we were speaking about al fahm al sahih the correct understanding if you want to have a tasawwur al sahih if you want to have a a correct perception if you want to be precise and accurate the characteristics that you need to adorn yourself with we're going to speak about that inshallah inshallah ta'ala the second part that we're going to leave for tomorrow is going to be al manhajiyatul amaliyya which is practical methodology that a student of knowledge needs to take and there be idhni lillahi al kareem we will speak about practical things that a person of knowledge a student of knowledge needs to do and this is going to be the most deepest the last one is why we chose this whole lecture which is al manhajiyya fi talab al ilmi the methodology of how to attain knowledge so a person can have a faham of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the person can have at tasawwur sahih and as we mentioned as we mentioned uh, last lesson as we mentioned that when the person has a correct understanding and the perception is correct we said that the person the person's rulings that they pass 
the person's rulings that they pass, the judgments that they pass, the fatwas that come from them is going to be what? It's going to be accurate. Or most, if I, if I, my, if I might say my statement correctly, the person he's, will not be one who contradicts himself. Because we don't believe that however much you reach in knowledge and however precise that you gain in knowledge, we're not ever going to say that you have ismah min al-zalal, that you're infallible from mistakes, that you won't do a mistake, because that's not possible. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, it's little that an honorable person, a person of great status, a person of great level, he said, Somebody who's very high in the ummah, it's very little, except that he has a what? Has a mistake with him. He has a what? He has a mistake uh, with him. But what we mean here is that the person will not be contradicting himself. He will not contradict himself. What will he have with him? The person will have with themselves consistency of what they're saying. You don't see that contradiction in them. And that's what benefits you when you attain knowledge based upon what? Based upon qawa'id and usul. When you learn it based on fundamentals and principles, you'll be a consistent person in your verdicts. You'll be consistent in your what? In your observation of the, of the religion. So let's go to the first one, inshallah ta'ala, which is um, uh, sifat, characteristics. التي ينبغي أن يتحلى أن يتحلى بها الراغب في طلب العلم. A person who has passion for knowledge, who wants to attain knowledge, the characteristics that he or she should come with. The first of them, brothers and sisters, is صفة الإخلاص, sincerity. The person needs to come with what? The person needs to come with the characteristics of what? Sincerity. The person has to be sincere. بأن يكون الإنسان مخلصا لله عز وجل that the person is sincere for Allah سبحانه وتعالى في طلبه للعلم when trying to attain knowledge this person is doing it for Allah alone سبحانه وتعالى and that person is striving for what to choose to truly understand وسعي لفهمه when you're striving to understand knowledge and you want to have that correct perception you're doing it all for Allah Taala's sake. Don't do it for what? Don't do it for hadhan dunyawiyan. Don't do it for a worldly gain, which is a'ajilan, that will come and then go. But do it for who? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's sake. And brothers and sisters, they all only want to ask you when they want to seek knowledge, oh, I want to take notes, oh, what books shall I read? But they really forget that there are characteristics if you don't come with, knowledge will not come your way. Knowledge will not come your way and you won't attain knowledge. The first of them is sincerity, ikhlas, that you're doing for this for who? You're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Ka'am ibn Malikin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, or he said, I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, man talab al-ilma, anyone who goes out to seek knowledge. This person is going out and his purpose in seeking knowledge is li yujari bihi al-ulama. This person is competing with the scholars. In other words, he's a person who wants to belittle and degrade the scholars by attaining this knowledge. He wants to say to the ulama, you see, he didn't know this. That's his aim and objective in learning knowledge. Or oh, this person, he just wants to argue. He just wants to debate with the dim-witted ones. Or he wants to also put them down. Or he wants to show that he has somehow a level and a status over the people or his aim and objective in attaining knowledge is so that he can divert the people's attention towards himself he wants to be the focus point he wants to have the spotlight on himself or he wants the people's faces to be directed at him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter that person into the hellfire and Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah he narrated that in his Sunan. ولذلك, the Salaf they used to say, Man kana lillahi dama, anything that is done for Allah's sake, it will continuously go on. The scholars used to say this. 
If something, brothers and sisters, is done for the sake of Allah, ma kana lillahi dama. Anything that is done for the sake of Allah, it will stay forever. What tasala and it will be continuous. If somebody does something for the sake of Allah, dama it will be going on forever, and that person will be continuous and it will carry on. Wa ma kana Allah. But if something was done for other than Allah tabarak wa taala, sake in qata'a, then that person, that thing would disconnect. That thing would what? It will come to an end. One fasal. You will not see it carry on. If your aim and objective in seeking knowledge was so that people can praise you, if you don't find that praise when you start seeking knowledge, what will happen to you? Because that's why you did it. That's why you went there to seek knowledge. So if you don't get that praise that you are looking for and people don't notice you, for the first year you'll try to push yourself still. But then when the year goes by, because you're not getting what you want, you went in for, you'll start to what? You'll start to move away from seeking knowledge. If the person started to seek knowledge, so he can find a woman, so he can marry, his aim is to say to her, look at the pen in my pocket. You see? And say t key terms. يعني طيب. So she, he comes across as a student of knowledge. A year or two when he still stays in knowledge and no one comes around. And no one recognizes his pencil and pen. Then this person, what will happen to him? He will stop seeking knowledge. He will tr stop trying to gain knowledge. And so you see him back on the streets again. But when something is done for Allah, then there's no ending to it. There's no ending to it. It will carry on. That's why the scholars, they said, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ دَامَ وَاتَّصَلْ وَمَا كَانَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ انْقَطَعَ وَانْفَصَلْ Anything that is done for Allah Tabarak wa Taala's sake, it will carry on forever. And it will be continuous. But when anything that is done for other than Allah's sake, you see that thing will stop. It will not carry on anymore. And many have come into this spectrum or this uh, idea of wanting to be a secret student of knowledge. But the reality of it is what? Is that their hearts are on a different valley. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, he said, He said the first thing in seeking knowledge is intention. Oh, that's the first thing. The first thing in seeking knowledge is that the person cleans their intention, their heart. That this is for Allah wa ta sake. That you want to get closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second he said is summa istima'. The second reason why you're trying to attain knowledge, he said that you is that you want to listen. The third he said thumma al-fahmu to understand it. Thumma al-hifdu then to memorize it. Thumma al-amalu then to, imp to implement it. Thumma al-nashru and then to spread the knowledge you attained. Abdullah Mubarak said that these are the levels and the stages that a person comes with. The third, first one is awwalu al-ilm al-niyya. The first thing of knowledge is intention. That this you're doing, you're doing it what? With a good intention. Niya hasana. You have a good intention for this. Tabtaghi min dhalika wajh Allah. You're trying to attain from this the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma al-istima' Then you want to listen. Thumma al-fahm Then you want to understand. Thumma al-hifd Then you want to memorize. Thumma al-amal And then you want to implement it. Thumma al-nashr And then you want to you want to spread the knowledge that you've attained. And as I said to you before, the intention of seeking knowledge, it has been, it has been summarized in the, couple, in the following couple of lines. فَالْتَقْصِدُ أَرْبَعَةً قَبْلَ ابْتِدَاء تَعَلَّمْ لِكَيْ تَفُوزَ بِالْهُدَى أَوَّلُهَا الْخُرُوجُ مِنْ ضَلَالِ وَالثَّانِ نَفْعُ خَلْقِ ذِي الْجَلَالِ وَثَالِثُ الْإِحْيَاءِ لِلْعُلُومِ وَالرَّابِعُ الْعَمَلِ لِلْمَعْلُومِ the first he said, فَالْتَقْصِدُ أَرْبَعَةً قَبْلَ ابْتِدَاء Intend, فَالْتَقْصِدُ Intend, أَرْبَعَةً فُوْ قَبْلَ ابْتِدَاء Before you start seeking knowledge. Have these intention in your heart, these four things. تَعَلَّمْ لِكَيْ تَفُوزَ بِالْهُدَاء Learn so you can find success. When you're trying, if you want to attain, attain through your knowledge success, then have these four things, brothers. Intend these four things. The first one is to take yourself out of misguidance. 
awaluha al-khuruj min dalali the first intention that you're coming with is I no longer want to be a misguided person. I do not want to be in the darkness of ignorance. The first reason why you're trying to attain knowledge is to take yourself out of ignorance. The second one is to benefit the people around you. Those who are around you, the creation of Allah is what you want to benefit. وَثَالِثُ الْإِحْيَاءِ لِلْعُلُومِ And the third is you want to revive the knowledge again. You want to bring that knowledge back to life again. That's what you want to do. This knowledge has been stopped. You know, people are not seeking this type of knowledge anymore. People have now spent their time. قِيلَ وَقَالْ Kalam. You're now going back to what? You're going back to what people find heavy and they don't want to go towards. People don't like studying mawarith. عِلْمُ ال inheritance. So what do you do? You go and study it. You give it back, you give life to it again. People have chosen not to study it because it's complicated, it's hard. Do I really need it? Is it my day-to-day needs? Uh, you've went beyond that. That was the third, right? And the fourth one is, is to implement the knowledge you've attained. Those are the four intentions in which you're try, trying to gain knowledge for. So when the scholars, they say, come with intention to seek knowledge, they mean these are the four intentions that you have to come with. These are the four intentions that you and I should come with when we want to attain knowledge. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he said, Al-ilmu la ya'adiluhu shay. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Ahli Sunnah said this. He said, Al-ilmu la ya'adiluhu shay. Ahmad said, nothing is equal to knowledge if a person's intention is correct. Ahmed Rahimahullah, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan Wasi'a, he said, nothing is equivalent to knowledge. Nothing is like knowledge. But for what? Liman sahat niyatu. For who like it? The one whose intentions is correct. Then the people they said, Qalu wa kayfa tasihunniya, ya Aba Abdullah, oh Abi Abdullah, how can a person, how can they correct their intention? What is it that they need to do to correct their intention? And then he said, That the person, he intends to uplift from himself, to remove from himself ignorance. Ah, first of all, when you're learning, you're not learning this knowledge so you can use it in the eyes of others and say, Ah, mashallah, this hadith applies on you. Look, I found this hadith against you. You don't learn it for that reason. The first reason why you're learning knowledge is that you want to uplift from yourself ignorance. You're sick and tired of being ignorant. You're sick and tired of being told this is halal, this is haram. You want to know that for yourself. The first is what? Yanwi raf al jahli an nafsihi. That you want to remove ignorance from yourself. Wa an ghayrihi. And then you start thinking about the community and the people you're from. Uh, you start to want to remove the ignorance from those who are around you. Ahmed said that's the intention. That's why the person is seeking knowledge in what, in, 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 and why they try to attain it. And Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, to show you the seriousness of knowledge and the intention that a person should have, the ikhlas, and how even the person shouldn't just have sincerity when they're trying to seek knowledge and try to understand knowledge, but even when the person is teaching knowledge, that the intention still doesn't go. And Imam Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i, Muhammad ibn Idris Shafi'i said, Waditu I wish, Waditu I wish, and then Nasa ta'allamu al-ilma. That the people, they gain knowledge. Shafi'i saying this. I wish that the people attain knowledge. I wish that the people gain knowledge. And no knowledge was attributed to me. Nothing was attributed to Shafi'i. I wish that this knowledge came to the people and that the people sought this knowledge, but nothing was attributed to me. But the reason why Ahmed Shafi'i has to bring his name out there is that Islam is taken from those who are what? Rulings. And ahkam are taken from those who are known. It's taken from somebody who's known. So Shafi'i rahimahullah, he has to be a senate, a chain for us in this, in this matter. So that's why his name has to be mentioned. But he said, I wish like him. That the people, they attain knowledge and they became people of knowledge. And knowledge came to them. Pure, clean knowledge could come to them. 
and I, Shafi'i, have no part to play in this. My name being mentioned, of course. I want the reward. Of course, he wants the reward. But he does not want, Rahimahullah, his name being said, Shafi'i said, Qale Shafi'i. He wants ikhlas, he wants to be hidden. Because what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves al abd al khafiya taqi. Allah loves the slave who's what? Khafi, hidden, and he's pious. No one knows of him. The more you're hidden, the more sincere you are. Well, if you look at the actions, the ones that are most beloved to Allah are those, are sincere, that, those which are hidden. The slave that's given the shade, the day of judgment, is a what? Abdun Allah khaliyan fafadat ayna. A person who remembered Allah in private and his eyes just watered. Why not public? Because privacy, Ibn al Qayyim says, privacy, when you're alone and you're private and no one is with you, the tears that come out of you are most accurate, most likely to be sincere. That when they come from you and you're by yourself, those tears that come from you are strongest in sincerity. So the reward is the highest. So that's why Imam Shafi'i said that statement. Ibn Jama'ah, Ibn Jama'ah rahimahullah, he said, Husnul niyyati fi talab al-ilmi. Ibn Jama'ah rahimahullah, he said in his kitab, Tadkirat al-Sami' wal-Mutakallim, fi adab al-ilmi wal-Mutallim, page 35, he said, Husnul niyyati fi talab al-ilmi, bi an yuqsad bihi wajhu Allah ta'ala, والعمل به وتنوير قلبه وتجلية باطنه والقرب من الله تعالى يوم القيامة والتعرض والتعرض لما أعد لأهله من رضوانه وعظيم فضله. He said حسن النية في طلب العلم good intention in seeking knowledge بأن يقصد is that the person intends وجه الله الله في سبحانه وتعالى why did you come today why are you sitting here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ And you're, you came to implement that knowledge. You want to go home today and take with you matters which you have to implement. Matters that you have to do. Today I've got, mashallah, things that I have to start implementing into my life that I never used to do. That's why you're seeking knowledge. Also the reason is what? وَتَنْوِيرُ قَلْبِهِ You want to bring light to your heart. That's what the intention is here. Ibn Jama'ah says that you bring light to your heart. وَتَجْلِيَةُ بَاطِنِهِ And that you also what? You cleanse your heart. You enlighten your heart as well. وَالْقُرُبُ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And your intent is to get closer to Allah. The intent for this is, I want to get closer to you, O oh Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The day of judgment. وَالتَّعَرُّضَ لِمَا أَعَدَّ لِآلِهِ And that you can also be given what Allah has promised subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have what? For his people. The people of Jannah, what he has prepared for them, so you can gain some proportion of that. Min ridwanihi, that he becomes pleased with you. Wa'adhimi fadlihi, that you also gain from him a great virtue. That's what your intention is. We're now going to go into the second characteristics that a student of knowledge needs to adorn himself if he wants to attain knowledge. And that is as-sidqu fi talab As-sidqu fi talab what does as-sidq fi talab mean? As-sidq fi talab it means it means that the person is truthful in seeking knowledge. Truthful in seeking knowledge. What does this mean? It means that when you're seeking knowledge, that you don't associate, you don't associate partners in knowledge. You do not associate partners with knowledge. When you're seeking knowledge, you leave your whole time and your whole life for this. You live for this. If you sleep, if you're going to sleep, the reason why you're going to sleep is so you can energize yourself, so you can attain more knowledge. Your whole life, it revolves around what? Knowledge. You know your salary that you gain, the money that you get from your salary, the money that you get this month. What is it towards? What is that money towards? The books that inshallah ta'ala that you want to buy. You've got a list of books. Your whole life, everything for it is what? It's seeking knowledge. Knowledge does not accept association, part, part, associate partners with it. 
He doesn't allow it. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn al-Qayyim رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He speaks about the difference between as-sidq wa al-ikhlasu. He says that the difference between as-sidq and ikhlas, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ ibn al-Qayyim says is that ikhlas goes towards the matlub. Who are you doing this action for? You're doing it for Allah alone. So you're singling Allah in what? In this action that you're doing for you. Only you're doing it for Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lakin as-sidq fi talab means you're not associating partners with nothing in knowledge. That you're not doing anything on the side. You got a full-time job. And you work nine to five. And then what are you doing? On the side, Saturday, Sunday, inshallah ta'ala, there's classes that are done in this masjid, so I'm coming, inshallah ta'ala. You know, when I get free time, definitely, I'll, still, I'll come around. Hakada. You know, what days do you have classes here? These days. Mm -hmm. I'll squeeze it in. That person is not going to attain knowledge. The most that we can say he will attain is thaqafa amma. We just have general understanding matters here. There's a man called Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He existed, okay. He will have thaqafa amma. As for being a talib ilm, a student of knowledge, mm -mm. knowledge doesn't allow that. It won't, it, won't, it won't work like that. The person has to be what? Has to be truthful to knowledge. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to uh, in the hadith to one of the comp uh, one of the men that took Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu he said to him, In Tasduq, in Tasduq Allah, if you're truthful to Allah, and you're doing this for Allah wa Ta'ala, you're truthful in this matter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will bring you on the upper hand. He will give you what you're trying to attain. If what you're doing, you're truthful about it, Allah will give you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the Prophet then said alayhi salatu salam on another in companion. Another man that took Islam, he said, Saddaq Allah. This man was truthful to Allah. فَصَدَّقَهُ Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him what he wanted. Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ikhwatil kiram. Knowledge doesn't accept any association. What does it need from you? It requires from you. It requires from you. It requires from you sincerity that you do it for him alone subhanahu subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't make knowledge fil fuduli min al waqti the times that you don't have nothing to do you know what i have nothing to do i might as well just go to the class you don't make it at those times rather what you make knowledge is the overwhelming majority of your time is seeking knowledge wal bahthi fihi and researching in knowledge Ya ikhwa, ilm is ghazir. This knowledge is a lot and it's also aziz. This knowledge is just, it requires effort and hard work. The person will not, ya ikhwa til kirab, he will not gain knowledge until knowledge sees from you that you're giving the most valuable thing to it. When it sees from you that you're giving, yabdullahu anfasa awqati. That the person is giving the best times, all of it, exerting everything into it. The knowledge will give you something in return. Busying yourself with politics and just following news all day. What did Al Jazeera say today? Okay, Ajib. Okay, BBC. And also following what's the what's Forex saying? What's the currency today? And etc. Or following other matters, football and this and that. All of these matters, or even Kathratul Khuruj excessively going out too much to gatherings and sitting with friends and eating out too much all of that knowledge doesn't accept that it doesn't allow that it doesn't like that all of these are reasons why a person loses out in truly understanding what knowledge is fahmul ilm you lose out because of this you lose out because of that and your perception becomes very weak knowledge reads from you ya ikhwah it needs the most precious time that you could have, times when you're sick, times when you give up, time, etc. It requires that from you in order to get somewhere with it. as to thalitha The third characteristic that the student of knowledge needs to adorn himself with is al al aliya high aspiration. Was-sabr ala ma yanaluhu talib al-ilmi min mashaqqatin fi talabihi. 
high aspiration and patience in the hardship that you endure when trying to attain knowledge. Ya ikhwa, your aspiration is too high. You have a what? You have a high aspiration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah azza wa jalla said, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. Ayah 200 in Surah Al Imran. And I want you to all sit over this, uh, this verse and go look at it, inshallah. Allah says, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, those of you who believe, Isbiru, sabiru, rabitu, wattaqullaha, four things Allah mentioned. And then after Allah gave us the, the result of when you come with this four. So Allah called the believers. What did He say to them? Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, those of you who believe. Spiru, Sabiru, Rabitu, Wattakullaha. And what will happen? La'allakum tuflihuna. You will attain success. If these four things are found in you, you will attain success. Go to this ayah and read up it. What are those four things? Try to understand those four things. Because is that what you're trying to look for? Everyone wants to find success. They want to what? Find a success. Abd Aziz ibn Baz, a da'i min al-du'at. A caller to Islam, a propagator of Islam came to him one time, Abd Aziz ibn Baz, alayhi rahmatullah. When he came to him, he said to him, I've given up, Shaykh Allah. I've given up, been given da'wah, I've been calling to Allah's path, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now I just don't see where it's going. He was saddened, stressed. And an Imam, an Imam, Abd Aziz ibn Baz, he grabbed him by the hand. Ibn Baz was blind. He grabbed him by the hand. And he said to him, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa rabitu. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. Wa attaqullaha. And they said, La'allakum tuflihuna. He said, have you come with these four in order for Allah to give you success, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if he says, yes, I did, then you wouldn't be coming here to complain. Because one of them is what? To be patient. One of them is what? To have patience. And to what? Endure the pain that comes with things. If you come with those, you'll find success. And then a person, brother, uh, brothers and sisters, a person who wants to truly gain knowledge can only gain knowledge through patience and endurance. To go through a lot. It won't just come. Knowledge won't just throw itself at you. It wants from you excessive patience to really, really, really be patient with it. وَلِذَلِكَ Abdullah ibn Abbas tells a story about himself. Pay attention to this. Who is better to take than the noble companion Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Prophet's cousin. Brothers, I ask you guys a question. When Ibn Abbas was born, how was his situation? Ibn Abbas, the minute he was born, the first thing that went into his mouth was whose saliva? Other than his own, which one was it? The Prophet Abdullah ibn Abbas, his saliva came into contact with the Prophet. His mother didn't give him anything. She waited to the morning. She took a piece of, uh, she, she took it to the Prophet and the Prophet ran through his mouth a piece of date and then he rubbed it on the mouth of who? Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas has the Prophet sallallahu saliva going to his mouth, the barakah. Second thing that he has attained is what? The dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Nabiullah Muhammad whose dua is mustajaba. Of course is it not? Is his dua not accepted? Didn't the Prophet not say to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa'allimhu ta'wila. Oh Allah, make Abdullah ibn Abbas have understanding of the religion. And oh Allah, make him know the interpretation of the Quran. Did the Prophet not say that for him? But did that make Ibn Abbas say, you know what, subhanAllah, knowledge is going to come to me. Did all of those factors that were in support of him, did they make Ibn Abbas say to himself, you know what, I don't really think I have to go out there and seek knowledge. No, Abdullah ibn Abbas knew that he had to still take the asbab, the means. So look what he did. Listen to the story. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he went to a man from the people of Ansar. And this teaches us something very powerful, which is when you're seeking knowledge, it's good to have a companion. Somebody who's, who's got a vision like you. If you realize they don't, then just get rid of them. Don't let them drag you along. But find a person you can take this path with. So what did he do? He went to the Ansari man, Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he said to him, Ya Fulan, so and so, 
هلوم كم فلنسأل أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Let's go to the companions of the Prophet Let's start asking them questions Let's take knowledge فلنسأل means Let's take knowledge from them Abdullah ibn Abbas is saying this The amazing thing is that This man I spent time to find out who he is Nowhere is he mentioned When the person doesn't embark on attaining knowledge He doesn't get mentioned Ibn Abbas is known though So what did he do? Ibn Abbas said, come let's go and seek knowledge from the companions Abu Bakr is alive, Umar is alive The noble companions are alive Today the Sahabas are a lot They are vast in number Just like today we can say we have some scholars amongst us These scholars are going to die A lot of them are very old in age, 60, 70 They are very old, fragile There will come a time when you see them not alive anymore This opportunity will miss you This opportunity will go You will never, maybe never see them the people you see today that are able to facilitate seeking knowledge and attaining knowledge, there might come a day that you won't be able to see them. They might die or you will no longer see that opportunity where that durus is just given like that to you. The companion said there are a lot in number. فَقَالَ وَعَجَبَ لَكَ يَا بْنَ عَبَّاسِ The man said, amazement be with you, Abn Abbas. أَتَرَ النَّاسَ Do you see that the people are going to be in need of you? Do you really think that the people are going to reach a point where they need you, Ibn Abbas? So this man didn't have high aspiration like Ibn Abbas. He didn't. He said, are people going to need you? When Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, they are older than you in age, and they are what? Senior than you, and they're more knowledgeable than you. Your Abdullah ibn Abbas was only 13 when the Prophet died. Do you think the people are going to reach a point in their life where they're going to have to sit with you and take knowledge from you? Abdullah ibn Abbas did not even, he didn't even look at that and say, SubhanAllah, you know what, I need to stop seeking knowledge. Maybe it's not for me. And didn't shake. Why? Because he had high aspiration. He had what? He had high aspiration. Brothers, I tell you this all the time. The person who has high aspiration and who has a big goal in his life his body suffers due to it. Because of his heart and the mission that he has in life, his body can't keep up with the type of mind that this person has. So they're just, they're striving, they're putting so much effort and hard work in their life. So he said to him, do you think the people are going to need you? And amongst the people are, min ashabin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tara, those who you, which you see, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, these are alive, do you think people are going to need you? Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Abbas then said, I went, فَتَرَكْتُ ذَلِكَ أَمَّا فَتَرَكَ ذَلِكَ Ibn Abbas dismissed what he said. Gave no, no importance to that. He said, وَأَقْبَلْتُ عَلَى الْمَسْأَلَةِ I went out and I started asking questions, as I would do. Look how Abdullah ibn Abbas was so patient. رضي الله تعالى عنه is an example in this, wallahi. Al-Imam al-Khattib al-Baghdadi wrote a book, الرحلة في طالب العلم. And he started with Abdullah ibn Abbas. Going out to seek knowledge. Look what Abdullah ibn Abbas did. For a whole year, he was trying to find the opportunity to ask a question to who? Umar radiallahu anhu. The hadith is sahihain. One year he was going around finding that opportunity to ask him. And the only time that he got the opportunity was when Umar radiallahu anhu was going to do call of nature. And Abdullah ibn Abbas got the water ready for him and he was giving it to him. And he said, I have a question to ask you. He said, What's the question that you have? Ibn Abbas said, I've been wanting to ask you this question for a year. And then he said to him, well, Then why didn't you ask me? And Umar had this type of respect that people couldn't just randomly come up to him and grab him and talk to him and do what they want. That haybah that Umar had. And then he wanted to know the ayah in Surah Al Tahrim. In tatuba ila Allahi faqad sagat qulubukma. Who is in tatuba? Who is meant by this? So Ibn Umar, sorry, Umar radiallahu anhu looked at Ibn Abbas and he said to him, Wa ajab al Ibn Abbas. Amazement be for you, Ibn Abbas. You're an amazing person, huh? Inna hafsa wa Aisha. The ayah is talking about hafsa and Aisha. The reason why Umar said that was, Umar knew the caliber of Ibn Abbas in ayat of the Quran. How young he was. But how old he also was. As the poet said, وَكَمْ مِنْ صَغِيرٍ لَا حَنَتْ عِنَايَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَحْتَاجَتْ إِلَيْهِ الْأَكَابِرُ How many people are young in age, 
But Allah has made this person reach a point where even the elders have become in need of him. Allah has bestowed that mercy onto him. The elders have now felt the need to come to him and go down to Ibn Abbas. At the age of before 20, Ibn Abbas was sitting in which he was gathering. He was sitting with the senior companions. Why, brothers? Because he didn't listen to the Ansari man. He had the high aspiration. He didn't take what he said. And he was allowed to sit in the assembly of Umar. You know what the assembly of Umar is? Umar, ya ikhwa, is conquering countries after countries, continents, lands. This is like sitting in the house of common. He's sitting with Umar ibn al-Khattab, where only people are going to sit there. If you think, hey, ati kibaru al-ulama, al legend daima is something, this is the legend. This is the real legend. And this is the real hayah. Hey, ya ikhwa. Are we all together, brothers? Umar radiallahu anhu. You can't sit there unless you have great knowledge and legend of daima. They're ulama akabir. They're fudala. But Abdullah ibn Abbas, at the age of teens, he was sitting with Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman ibn Awfan, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrahan, Uthman ibn Affan, and Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was sitting with them. Why lack him? This is the question you need to ask yourself. It's because of his knowledge, it's because of what he knew. He had to be brought in the gathering. So Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I dismissed what the Ansari man said. When I dismissed it, he said, I went out to seek knowledge. يبلغني, he said, it will sometimes reach me. A hadith will reach me regarding a man. I would hear that a companion has a hadith. I will, go and see, I will go to him. Look at the etiquette of this noble companion. He knows he wants to learn, so he would go. Knowledge is something that you go towards. You have to travel. He's the Prophet's cousin. He can say, I'm the person who the Prophet first gave food to. I have the dua of the Prophet. You come to me and teach me this mas'ala. La. Al-ilmu yu'ta wa la yati. You have to go out of your way to seek knowledge. Not that knowledge would come to you. People want that knowledge to come to them. The whole method and the whole way is all wrong. Ah. Wa qa'inun. Fa'atasawwadu rida'i ala babihi. Umar Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I would then go what? I would lie down in front of that person's place, waiting for him to come out of his apartment, to come out of his to come out where he's in. And I do what? So I can ask him questions. And I cover my face because of the wind. The dust is going in people's faces and eyes. He said, I'm sitting there waiting for him to come out. Fayakhruj, ya there's no air conditioner, there's nothing like that. In that hot, burning sun, he's sitting outside waiting for this companion to come out. I will come, he will come out, the person will come out. فيراني, he would see me. فيقول, he would then say to me, Ya ibn Ammi Rasulillah, the Prophet's cousin. Ya ikhwah. This is Nabi Allah Muhammad's cousin. This is the honor he has. This is, he has the haq of Qaraba, the Prophet's family. He, none of that will get in Abdullah ibn Abbas's way. He wants knowledge, he's hungry for knowledge. He's not arrogant. And so he said he would go to me and he would say to me, Ibn Amr Rasulillah, what is that, that what is it that brought you? And then he would say to him, uh, Why didn't you send somebody and tell them that I that you need me and I will come to you, Ibn Abbas? Why do you have to come to me? Faqulu I then would say to him, Ana ahaqu an atiak. I'm more rightful to come to you. I should be the one that comes to you. I would then ask him about a hadith. He said, Time went on. I kept doing that, kept, kept going to one companion's house and another one, and going and asking and taking knowledge from them. Until what? Until one day I had a gathering and I was teaching, and the Ansari man saw me. The one who said to me, What? Do you think the people are going to be need, in need of you? The one that said to me, him, do you think that the people are going to need you? And that the people are going to one day want to sit with you? That they're not, there's going to reach a point where they want to sit with you. He saw me. That man saw me. He saw me. And the people were gathered in front of me. I was teaching them. فقال, he said to me, كان هذا الفتى أعقل, أعقل مني. This boy was truly smarter than I was. This boy was truly more smarter than I was. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the day of Arafah, he stood up 
and he explains Surah An-Nur. The Rawi and the narrators of the Hadith, they said, لو رآ, لو الروم والفرس, If the Romans and the Persians were to hear it, they would have all taken Islam. Tafsir and explanation that he put on those ayat. And the knowledge that was coming out of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. A man who Allah gave him all of that. But where did that come from, brothers? It came from him, Aliyah, high aspirations. And he was very patient in the hardship, in the hardship that he went through. As soon as you see a bit of hardship, and don't give up. It's part of what knowledge is. Rather, when it becomes the more harder it gets, then you're doing it right. If you're finding comfort in seeking knowledge and you're enjoying yourself, then something's wrong. وَلِذَلِكَ أَلِمَامُ مُسْلِمْ نَرِيْتِ لِنِي الصَّحِيحِ مُعَلَّقًا That Al-Imam Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, he said, لَا يُنَالُ الْعِلْمَ بِرَاحَةِ الْجَسَدِ Knowledge is not attained with a relaxed body. فَالْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمُ knowledge, knowledge is attained by putting effort, exerting effort into it. وَالْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمُ Forbearance is not attained except exerting effort to get it. وَمَنْ صَبَرَ صَبَّرَهُ اللَّهُ And the person who comes with patience, Allah will give him patience subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. Just like water and fire can't be together. Just like black, dark and light cannot be together. Relaxation, comfort and seeking knowledge cannot be together. They are the two opposite. If you're trying to attain them both at the same time, then you're looking for the impossible. Memorize that. You're trying to look for the impossible. They can't come together, both of them. Yes, The body has to really suffer. It has to. Look at what Sha'bi was said to him. Amr ibn Sharahil al-Sha'bi. Rahimahullah. Imam Sha'bi, look what it was said to him. Min aina laka hadha? Amma min aina laka hadha al-ilma? Kulla. Where did you attain all of this knowledge from? <coughs> Sha'bi, you're an alim. Min afadili tabi'in. You're from the virtuous tabi'in. One of the most noble and righteous ones. Where did you gain all of this knowledge from? Look what he said. He said, binafi al-i'timad. He said, I stayed away from reliance. Okay? When he says, I don't rely, he means, hey, I don't rely on myself. I rely on Allah. I knew that I couldn't gain this. I gave my affairs to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also what can fall on it is, I didn't rely on others. If he didn't rely on himself, then he didn't rely on others as well. He relied on who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the nuskha of Ibn Asakir's nuskha in Tariq Dimashq, it doesn't say the word بِنَفْيِ الْإِعْتِمَاد It says بِنَفْيِ الْإِغْتِمَام And if it says بِنَفْيِ الْإِغْتِمَام the meaning would be staying away from stress. That which a person will go through. I, he said I wouldn't stress myself out. Every little thing that I see, I'll dismiss it. I'm always working on what? Being nashid tayyib al nafs. Making sure that I'm enthusiastic, I'm ready, I'm focused. I wouldn't let little unnecessary things that come on the side get in my way and blur everything for me. But this one, the most common one in books is binafi al itimad, staying away from reliance. What else? Was sayru fil bilad, traveling on the earth. The second reason I attain knowledge, Sha'bi saying this, is I traveled. I traveled the world. Ya ikhwa, some people come up to you and say, Akhi, I, I think I want to go to Egypt and seek knowledge. Ya Akhi, your own local area, there are durus going on, there's hifd of Quran going on, there's things happening in your local area, you don't go to it. Do you really think that when you go to another country, you're going to learn? These ulama, when they used to say we travel to other countries, they first of all would take the knowledge of their city and their country. And when they realize there's no one to take from, then they will travel. This idea of, I'm going to travel when I go to that country, I will attain knowledge. If you weren't able to do it in the place that you're at, then definitely you're not going to do it when you leave this country. You're just going to be who you are when you go to the other country. 
The second reason and why I gained my knowledge is I traveled. I traveled the world. I was patient, like the donkey's patient. Look at the donkey. He gets he whipped. He gets so much put onto him. And he's patient. He takes everything. He carries the whole people's stuff. Everything is put on him. He said, I was like that. Sabr, kasabr al hibar, like the donkey. Wa bukur, bukur al ghurab. And I was also early, just like the crow leaves in the early morning. Ah, a person who's early. You're a student of knowledge and you're sleeping what? All through the morning. The talib ilm is an early person. Some people say to me, why is this class at 7 o'clock? Brother, can you just push it to uh, 9 o'clock? Ah. Asali goes against seeking knowledge. Asali is that? The person who The morning is what he should seek knowledge. And Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he said, In هذا الأمر لا ينالو. And Imam Malik, Imam Mudari al-Hijrah, he said, This matter, a knowledge, is not attained حتى يذاق فيه طعم الفقي Until you taste the bitterness of poverty. Uh, unless you ch taste poverty, hunger, and you, you reach a point where you have nothing to eat. Wallahi, I remember, subhanAllah, reading some of the hunger that the scholars went through. Sufyan al-Thawri, wa ki'ibn al-Jarrah al-Ru'asi came to him. And Sufyan was so hungry, so, so hungry, that Sufyan couldn't shake wa ki'ibn al-Jarrah al-Ru'asi's hand properly. The hunger that he reached. And so he was lying down and he just grabbed the taraf, taraf of his asabi', just the front fingers of his, and he shook it like that, and he threw himself back. Waqi' didn't realize, and he just, let, just, just left. Then Sufyan, rahimahullah, came into contact with Waqi' before, after that, and he said to him, I'm sorry if I didn't give you the brotherly greeting that you deserve from me. He said, I was very hungry. I had nothing to eat. But now, inshallah, my energy is back. هكذا كان أهل العلم. The ulama and أهل العلم, their hunger will reach that. Look at Sufyan al-Thawri. He didn't ask Waqi' to give him food. مع ذلك, look. مع ذلك, because when you become hungry, you become what? Moody. When a person becomes hungry, they lose their what? Their akhlaq and their, starts to become moody. Like just the same way when the person grows old, they become moody. Uh, always angry, complaining and whatnot. The same is with what? When the person is hungry. So that's why he said, but look how hungry he was, rahimahullah. Ahl ilm, books have been written on the, the scholars and their hunger and their suffering and their fakr. How they were, rahimahullah, jami'an. And Imam Shafi'i, he said, فَحَقُّ الْعَلَى طَلَبَةِ الْعِلْمِ بُلُوغُ غَايَةِ جُهْدِهِمْ فِي الْاسْتِكْتَارِ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ وَالصَّبْرُ عَلَى كُلِّ عَارِضٍ دُونَ طَلَبِهِ وَإِخْلَاصُ النِّيَّةِ لِلَّهِ فِي اسْتِدْرَاكِ عِلْمِهِ نَصًّا وَاسْتِبَاطًا وَالرَّغْبَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الْعَوْنِ عَلَيْهِ That the student of knowledge, in order to attain his goal that he's looking for, he has to exert every effort that he has. Every effort that he has, he has to exert it. In order to attain that goal you're looking for, to increase by, which is to increase yourself in knowledge, put everything that you have onto it. Look what he said after that. وَالصَّبْرُ عَلَى كُلِّ عَارِضٍ دُونَ طَلَبِهِ Every obstacle that is thrown at you, every hardship that comes your way, that you show patience. You show patience. You show endurance. وَإِخْلَاصُ النِّيَّةِ لِلَّهِ And that you're sincere for Allah تبارك وتعالى فِي اسْتِدْرَاكِ عِلْمِهِ نَصًّا وَاسْتِبَاطًا وَرَغْبَةً إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الْعَوْنِ عَلَيْهِ That you have sincerity in extracting these evidences, the Quran and the Sunnah and its rulings. You have evidence. And the passion to Allah wa that he helps you and aids you in this matter. Wallahi, brothers, sit down and read the story of the ulama in their patience and seeking knowledge, how they spent and what they did, rahimahumullahu jami'an, the wealth that they put into it. Books have been written in that regard. Abu Yusuf, who is a student of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he said, Al-ilmu shay'un la yu'tika ba'dah hatta tu'tiyahu kullak. Uh, Yusuf al-Qadi, Sahib Abu Hanifa, he said, knowledge is something that will not give you anything. It will not give you, sorry, knowledge is something that will not give you something until you give everything. Knowledge is one of the things that 
It will not give you something in return unless you give everything. You will never be given all of knowledge, abadan. The one who wala yuhiituna bi shay'in min ilmi. No one can encompass knowledge of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. No one can have full knowledge, complete knowledge. As Allah said in the Quran, wa fawqa wa fawqa kulli dhi ilmin alim. Above every person who has knowledge, there's one who's more knowledgeable. So even if you're the most knowledgeable person on the face of this earth, then Allah is more knowledgeable than you. There's things that you still don't know. There's things that are hidden from you. But what knowledge will do is that if, it, if you want knowledge to give you something in return, this is all you want from knowledge, you, know, you don't want everything from it, is that you need to give everything. And if you don't give everything, it doesn't give you anything at all. It doesn't give you, uh, it doesn't give you anything. And as I said to you before, Brothers, if you don't have high aspiration and you don't have patience in seeking knowledge, you're not going to take from knowledge except what? Thaqafa amma. You're just going to have an overview of knowledge. It matters here or there. That's what you're going to have. As for ta'seel and ta'eed and to be grounded and to be rooted like that and to have tamakkun in ilm. Your, mashallah, your solid student of knowledge that only comes from what? A person who has high aspiration and a person who is patient. And if you want more of this matter, brothers, and you want to look more into it, then go to the books of Adab al-Talab, the books that talk about the etiquette of student of knowledge. And also try, my brothers, to read the Tarajum al-Ulama, the biography of the scholars, like Kitab Sir Alam al nubala Try to read the Kitab of uh, Al-Imam Dhahbi, which I mentioned, Sir Alam al nubala Try to sit down and read that book. It will give you. And Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah's Kitab al-Bidaya wa al-Nihaya. And also the books that have the Tarajum that are specifically for some of the ulama that are written. Try to buy those books that talk about Ibn Taymiyyah's life or Ibn Qayyim's life. All these ulama, try to take time to read them. فَإِنَّهَا تَشُدُّ الْحِمَمْ Because that will push your aspiration even more when you look at a person doing this. الصِّفَةُ الرَّابِعَةُ The fourth brothers is الْعَمَلُ بِالْعِلْمِ Implementing the knowledge. Implementing the knowledge. is an aspiration, is, sorry, it's a characteristic that a student of knowledge needs to adorn himself with. That the person, the knowledge that he's gaining, he's implementing as he gets it. He's what? He's implementing it. And brothers and sisters, implementing, that, implementing the knowledge that you have is from what? Min a'dami ma yuthbitul ilm. It's one of the things that solidify knowledge into your heart when you start implementing it. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامِ الشَّعْبِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ Who we mentioned before, he said, كُنَّا نَسْتَعِينُ عَلَى حِفْظِ الْحَدِيثِ بِالْعَمَلِ بِهِ the way that we used to, um, uh, the, the, the methods and the tools in which we used to take in order to memorize the hadith was by implementing it. Implementing it was one of the means of making sure that we keep that, uh, that hadith with us. But like some people today, when you say to a brother, do you know the dua al istiftah for the salah? Read it. Some people will say, give me a second. He'll stand up and he'll pretend to pray. Some people do that. And they will read it. When they get into that position, they know it. You see how when you implement something, you can do it. You can say it. He said to Allah, when I'm in that position, it comes. It just naturally comes from me. But when I go outside it, I can't say it. Now if you ask me, I need to think. But when I'm in that moment, and I'm starting my prayer, and I need to make the dua, it comes out fluent, fluently, and it comes out, it rolls off my tongue. And that's true. It's sahih. The reason is because what you implement will stick with you. What you stop implementing will go. If you don't implement something, it will go. That knowledge will be taken from you. وَلِذَلِكَ حَافِظُ ibn Salah rahimahullah, he narrated, he said, we narrated from Waqi' ibn Jarrah, he brings this chain to Waqi' ibn Jarrah al-Ru'asi, that he said, إِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَنْ تَحْفَظَ الْحَدِيثِ If you want to memorize a hadith, فَعْمَلْ بِهِ Implement it. Implementing it is what you need to do. Asifatul Khamisa, the fifth characteristic that a person needs to adorn himself with, is that Adamul Istijali bi talab al Nataiji wa Thimar. That the person he does not become hasty to see the results. And that you don't want to you don't hasten, sorry to see the efforts of your labor quickly. Don't hasten to that. A person comes up to you 
okay? And a week or three months or a year, he come up to you and say to you, Allah, I don't know if I'm seeking, I don't know if I'm gaining something, knowledge here. Ya akhi, adam isti'jal, stop being hasty. Bi talab in nata'iji wa thimar. By looking at the results quickly. If you don't see a result, it's not working. Walidhalika, if you look at today, the marketing methods that are taken, the promotions that the kuffar are doing, every single thing they have to say three weeks, you're going to see a, a rapid result. Hajib. And sad because if the kuffar do that, they're doing a worldly stuff. They're doing a what? Worldly stuff. Okay? But it's sad when the Muslims have taken that type of mindset and they've tried to apply it to the knowledge. They've taken that same concept and they say to you, two years you're going to be a half of bi kitabillah. Half of Ten years to, to itqan. To be honest, the majority of the people tell you that when they finished the Quran the first time wasn't even that. It wasn't even the strongest time. You find so many mistakes in your Quran. The second time it feels like you're kind of healing the, the wounds in your Quran, that you, the places that you butchered. And then the third, maybe it's like when you kind of see your efforts of hakada. A person will tell you, Akhi, inshallah ta'ala, we're opening an institute after a year, you're going to master the Arabic language. <laughs> master. Master, yeah, Akhi, see the way he didn't master the language. It's a language. Do you hear the word master? It's a language. Language doesn't finish. What do you mean, master a language? And so some of them have even taken on the concept of saying, two years alamiya course. And what after that? You're an alim after that. You're a scholar after that. How much? Because you do the two year alamiya course. Alamiya, two year course, huh? This is a problem now. Without one of the wallahi, the best statements I've heard from the contemporary scholarship, Abdul Khidim Khudayr, is that he said, when a person graduates from this Islamic university and he graduates, the certificate that he's given, he said it is to tell him that he knows nothing. That certificate tells him, for those six years, you've learned that you don't know nothing. Now, you know how to seek knowledge of what you need to do. Go, go. But what some have understood from that is, after those six years that they're a scholar, there's no need to add on to it. They don't need to add on to it. So where are people, ya ikhwa, Adam, people have isti'jal, we're hasty in everything that we want to do. We're very hasty, we need to see the crops and the fruits. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, when the companions, the hadith of Al-Khabbab ibn al-Arat, رضي الله تعالى عنه, when he came to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, and then he said, أَلَا تَنْصُرْ لَنَا O Messenger of Allah, you're not going to give us victory. أَلَا تَدْعُوا لَنَا Are you not going to make dua for us? This was a time when the companions were being hurt and suffering, was, they were going through a lot of hardship in Mecca. And the Prophet was sitting in the Kaaba under the shade of the Kaaba. Okay, brothers. The Prophet was sitting in that position. And so he came to him and he said that to him. And then the Prophet told him, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kad kana fi man kana qablakum rajul yuhfaru lahu fil qabr, al ard. A man will be taken, he will be placed on this earth. A blade will be then taken, it will be put on his head, and it will be sliced into two, and he will die from that. La yasuddu dhalika an dini shay'at. This will not take him away from his religion. Look what the Prophet after that then said. He said, وَلَكِنْ لَكُمْ قَوْمُ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ But you are a people who are very hasty. A calamity befalls you. A suffering comes your way. You need to see the efforts and the fruits of your labor and your hard work straight away. The Prophet said to him, وَلَكِنْ لَكُمْ قَوْمُ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Wallahi, the Prophet said, he swore by Allah. Wallahi la yathiru al-raakimu min san'a. The Prophet said, a rider will come from san'a to Hadramaut. He fears nothing except a wolf eating his goats. That's all he fears. But you guys are hasty people. You are a people who are very, very hasty. You need to see the victory of Islam overnight. It won't happen like that. Same is with when it comes to knowledge. You won't see knowledge straight away. It will take time, it will take years, it will take months, it will take so much. Are we all together? It'll take time. And this subhanAllah is being put into us so much, so much, that it's hard for a person to even what? Get, get rid of. I remember recently I went to a place and 
I came into contact with one practitioner and we were talking and he told me something and he said if you do this, this will change and he will do this for you and whatnot. And I'm listening to him and I said to him, how long is it going to take? And then he told me a period of time and when, how long it's going to take. I said, oh, can, you make it, can, can, can it be done fast? Are you there brothers? Oh, okay, then. All of us, we have that in us. We really want to see a problem happened, we need to see the results straight away. So I have to grab myself, subhanAllah. See, because you get affected by that mindset and that thinking. So brothers, knowledge is an honor. It's an honor. Nailul makarim. You're trying to attain knowledge. An honor. Wa dhafar wa rif'a. Allah wants to raise you subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yujami'u al-isti'ajal. This does not. It doesn't gather with it hastiness then. Honor is it's effort and hard work that you need to put in. Brothers, do you not know this powerful statement of At-Tufi rahimahullah? At-Tufi rahimahullah, he said, <coughs> Allah said in the Quran, Allahu a'lam wa haythu yaj'alu risalata. Allah knows where he's going to place his message in, right? Did Allah not choose the Nabi like Muhammad as a messenger? Did he choose anybody else? He specifically chose him, right? Just as the way Allah chooses the prophets and the messengers, he also teach, he chooses the people of knowledge. The people of knowledge are chosen by Allah. So for you to be from those who Allah chose, you can't just take it easily. Uh, anything other than prophecy, it comes through hard work. Are you with me, brothers? Are we all together? You have to work for it. You have to earn it. You have to deserve that title of being an alim. You can't just take that overnight. Or else everybody would be alim. Everybody would be alim. And one of the things that people that get in their way in this matter is that the person wants to be a sheikh overnight. Sah? Taraus. He wants to have students after a week of coming to a lesson. He makes a little poster. He, he promotes it. He puts a stand there. And now he thinks he wants, he wants to teach up the same thing that he learned. Are we together, brothers? This is not... This is istijal, hastiness. Having not grounded yourself yet. Also what falls under that is these people who won't come to classes. They'll ask you, how long is this book going to be for? They're going to carry on, maybe for two, three years. It's going to go on. And they'll say to you, subhanAllah, is there going to be any dawrat, a intensive seminars that you're going to do again like you did last time? <laughs> What do you want? Inshallah ta'ala, I just want to go through like maybe eight, nine, ten books one time, in one gathering, maybe a week or two. That is not, that's istijal, that's hastiness, it falls under this. The dawrat which are called dawrat mukathafa, where the shit comes, he sits, or the teacher comes, he sits, and he sits, and he teaches ten books or nine books. This does not give you ta'seen and taqeed. Not at all. It doesn't ground you, nor does it give you, solidify you, make you a person. No, it doesn't. The reason is because, again, knowledge requires time. It needs that time. It needs that information to soak in. Once your body, ya ikhwa, you go to the gym today. When you work on a body part on your, in your body, what do you do? Do you work on it tomorrow again? No, you take the pain off it. You let it to recover. You, take it, you put the effort towards the upper body now. Then you push it towards this part of the body, and this part, and this part. And when the body heals, then you put it again through the efforts and the hard work. That's how you see results. But if you push it to its limits, the body will not show nothing. Because you're killing the tissues and etc. That's your body. The mind's the same. Wallah is no different. It's no different. Your brain needs, it needs that time. So if you're throwing usul fiqh, you finish it one day, and the next day, nukhbat al-fikr, again, you're throwing it at it, the brain will not take it in. You could, you will benefit something from there. But if you, ha you have to be going to a long-term classes. You have to go to long-term classes. People don't like those type of classes. Because it goes against our nature. Allah created mankind what? Hasty. We love to see results quickly and straight away. The sixth characteristic, brothers, that we need to come with. Before I go, there's a statement said by Yunus ibn Yazidin. 
about the issue of isti'ijal and hastiness. He said that Ibn Shihab, Muhammad Ibn Shihab al Zuhri, said to me, Ya Yunus, la tukabir al ilm, fa inna al ilm udiyatun, fa ayyuha akhatta fihi qata bika, qabla an tablugah. Walakin khudhum ala yami wal layali. This is the point that concerns us. He said, Walakin khudhu, take knowledge, ma'al ayami wal layali. Take knowledge day and night. Ah, gradually. Ah. Don't take one knowledge all at once. Don't take kamir kabira. Don't take a great amount onto yourself. In a, you take a lot in a very short time. Don't do that. Ah. Look what he said after that. For verily, the one who tries to attain knowledge and wants to gain it all at once, all of it at once, it leaves you all at once. The Somalis, they have a saying. The Somalis, they have a saying, which is, anyone who climbs a tree fast can come down from it fast. Sah? In other words, anything that comes fast, goes fast. In English, they say, easy come, easy go. That's what it is. Because this knowledge all came at once, it won't stay, it will go. As it came, it will leave you again. وَلَكِنِ الشَّيْءَ بَعْدَ الشَّيْءِ مَعَ الْأَيَّامِ وَالْلَيَالِ But what? Knowledge is what? Small bits. Bite size. Remember GCC years? Remember the little books, bite size? Do they still exist? Huh? Do they exist those GCC bite size books? Yeah? They exist? Huh? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, those books. They used to call it bite size. هكذا العلم. Ilm is what? Bite size. Small. If you take a big amount into your mouth, you won't be able to chew it, man. Take small portions. The sixth characteristic that the person needs to adorn himself with and have with him is mulazamat al-ulama. You have to be stuck with the scholars' brothers. ilmi anhum, and taking knowledge from them, wa murajatim, and going back to them. Ya ikhwa, when we say ulama, people of knowledge, is that. You go back to those people. Allah has made them ulama. وعدم الاكتفاء بالكتب والمطالعات. It's not enough that you read a book mm -hmm. and you observe books and you do اطلاع. That's good. It's very beneficial to read and to research and whatnot. But ya ikhwat al kiram, you need a teacher. You need a person of knowledge over you. Ah. فالعلم نالج لا يؤخذ إلا إلا من العلماء. Knowledge is not taken except from the scholars and people of knowledge. A person cannot say to you, I attain knowledge and I gain knowledge بكثرة القراءة. I read all of these books. Ah, I did اطلاع. Look at my memory. I any ask me anything. I memorized it all. You don't gain knowledge like that. عمر رضي الله عنه ودري سي ألا وإن الناس بخير ما أخذوا العلم عن كابرهم. عمر رضي الله عنه said that the people are upon good. As long as they take knowledge from their seniors. And if the youngsters don't stand up in opposition with their seniors, the people are upon khair. When he says that the young ones are not out there speaking about their senior ones. A youngster of knowledge. He's not what? He's not coming towards a senior person than him in knowledge. If that happens, then they become destroyed. When a young is speaking against the senior one. ولذلك عبد الله بن مسعود he said لا لا يزال لا يزال الناس بخير that the people will be upon good ما أتاهم العلم علم if knowledge comes to them من قبل كبارائهم when knowledge comes to them from their senior their elders فإذا أتاهم فإذا أتاهم but when knowledge comes to them, العلم من قبل أصاغرهم, when knowledge comes from to them from their youngsters, هلكوا they become destroyed, they become destroyed. ولذلك the Prophet said in the Hadith من علامات الساعة from the signs of the hour is أن يلتمس العلم عند الأصاغر. One of the signs of the hour is that knowledge will be sought from the youngsters, and the senior scholars will be dismissed. People don't want to go to them. What is meant by the youngsters? The scholars, they say that the youngsters here is not necessarily the age. No. They said, Al-Asagir, 
fi atari there are two groups who are they the first ones are ahlul bid'ah abd abdul barr mentions that in his kitab jami' bayan al ilm wa fadli and the second one is ayl asaghir fi al ilm those who are young in knowledge not in age knowledge are we all together they are what young in knowledge their knowledge is immature haven't got knowledge have no understanding of the deen these are people are saghir even if the person is old in age and is white bearded and he has no knowledge he's min al asaghir it's a person's beard is white and he's from the ahlul bid'ah he's from the asaghir are we all together because if you look at some of the ulama that we've seen they were young al imam hafid al hakami rahimahullah hafid al hakami he didn't pass the age of 35 the author of the kitab sulam al musul ila ilm al usul i think he died at 32 33 something like that ibn abdul hadi died at the age of 38 uh, al imam al nawawi died at the age of what 40 something al imam uh, uh, al imam shafi'i what that age did he die 50 53 53 he was very young very very young he died at that age al imam shafi'i rahimahullah ya there are many ulama there are many ulama who died at a very young age ولذلك one of the scholars مشايخ from المعاصرين يحيى العمراني wrote a kitab called العلماء الذين لم يبلغوا سن الأشد scholars who didn't reach a very senior age and he compiled all of their tarajib their biography there and Sheikh Sulaiman al-Ruhayli has a very good statement in this regard which we mentioned in the muqaddima of the in our introduction of uh, the method of Abu uh, Shuja' when we explain it, what is meant by Allah Sagir, who knowledge should not be sought from, has a kalam nafis in that regard. We, we quoted him in that and we mentioned and we spoke about that. Lakin, as we said, brothers, if we have a person who is young, has got great knowledge, and we have a person who's old and has got great knowledge, we'll give the superiority, we'll give the upper hand to who? The one who's older in age. لأن أيج يا إخوة الكرام is not the محل النظر في حد ذاتي we don't specifically just look at merely because of the age يا إخوة but the age is a is a factor that a person will be chosen for because the older that the person is the more mature and the more detached that the person is what from the ملذات الدنيا the glamours and the glitters of this dunya he more sees his قبر he sees his grave more than the young one he sees what? He sees his grave more. But if you look at the people, they try to disconnect you from the senior scholars. Shaykh Sulaiman al ruhayli says that the Asaghir are those whose statements are not in line with the scholars who are senior in age. That's what he says. And I mentioned that before. That if the person who's speaking, he's not coming out with nothing new. Everything he's saying, the Kibar have said that. He's just explaining and he's translating and he's bringing that information. And Yultamus Indahul Ilm knowledge is sought from that type of person. I ask you all, brothers, to go to the kalam by Al Imam Shatibi Rahimahullah in this regard. Al Imam Shatibi has a very powerful statement, very long and lengthy in his Kitab Al Muafaqat. The first volume, page 139 to page 148 please go and look at what he says it's nine pages of gold of when it comes to the path of attaining knowledge the ways to attain knowledge and he talks about the method of sitting under the feet of a scholar and taking knowledge from him and he talks about going and reading books I advise you all to go to that place, inshaAllah ta'ala, which I mentioned. I'll conclude there, bi-idhnillah al-kareem. Anything which I have said that was wrong, is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. InshaAllah ta'ala, tomorrow, we're going to go into al-manhajiyatul amaliyyah. When tomorrow we're going to go into practical steps, steps that the person needs to take. We're going to say this stage, second stage, that the person has to go through in order for him to come out with al-fahmu, 
Wasihatu tasawwur. When the person comes up with correct understanding and a correct perception. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.